Life is beautiful, life is gay, when I give myself away, when I live to please Thee, Lord, dancing in Thy ray. Let me see Thee everywhere, hear Thy melodies in the air, let me feel Thy strength in me, give me joy to share. Life is beautiful, life is gay, when I give myself away, when I live to please Thee, Lord, dancing in Thy ray. Let me see Thee everywhere, hear Thy melodies in the air, let me feel thy strength in me, give me joy to share. Let me feel thy strength in me, give me joy to share. The voice of God calls us to awaken in him. How will he find us when he comes? Awake, awake and ready! And when he asks us to dedicate our lives ever more perfectly to him, how will he find us? Awake, awake and ready! Let's pray together. Divine Mother, Divine, Divine Mother, Mother, Heavenly Father, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, Friend, Beloved God, Friend, Beloved, Beloved God, God, Great Masters, Great, great Masters, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ Baba Ji Krishna, Baba Ji Krishna, Hiri Mahashaya, Hiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Teshwar. Beloved Guru, Beloved Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Saints of all religions, humbly and lovingly we bow at thy feet. Humbly and lovingly we bow at thy feet. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, be with us, be with us, and guide our lives, and guide our lives. Show us the way, show us the way. Hold us by the hand, hold us by the hand. And bring us home to thee. And bring us home to thee. Divine Mother. Divine Mother. We will reason. We will reason. We will will. We will will. And we will act. And we will act. But guide thou. But guide thou. Our reason. Our reason. Our will. Our will. And activity. And activity. To the right path in everything. To the right path in everything. We are thine, Divine Mother. We are thine, Divine Mother. Be thou eternally ours. Be thou eternally ours. Om. Om. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. 
to gaze at the point between the brows. Feel to listen, tune in at the spiritual eye. These words from Swami Kriyananda and affirmations from affirmations for self-healing. This week's affirmation is openness. Openness can be a virtue, but only when it is exercised with discrimination. To be open to wrong ideas or to people who would harm you would be foolish. For it is not with openness that error can be conquered, but with love. Openness of mind is a virtue when it is centered in the desire for the truth. Openness of heart is a virtue when it is centered in love for God. Both mind and heart, however, need filters to screen out what is not true and what is not of God. This we can do by referring back for approval to the divine presence within whatever comes to us. We must be ever open to truth and to God, but ever closed or at least indifferent to error and delusion. Now, if you feel to, um, we're going to do the affirmation out loud first with a strong conscious voice repeating after me. My mind is open to the truth. My mind is open to the truth. Whatever its source. Whatever its source. True statements remain valid. True statements remain valid. Even if hurled in anger. Even if hurled in anger. Again, my mind is open to the truth. My mind is open to the truth. Whatever its source. Whatever its source. True statements remain valid. True statements remain valid. Even if hurled in anger. Even if hurled in anger. Like now with a speaking voice, my mind is open to the truth. My mind is open to the truth. Whatever its source. Whatever its source. True statements remain valid. True statements remain valid. Even if hurled in anger. Even if hurled in anger. My mind is open to the truth. My mind is open to the truth. Whatever its source. Whatever its source. True statements remain valid. True statements remain valid. Even if hurled in anger. Even if hurled in anger. Now softer, like almost a whisper. My mind is open to the truth. Whatever its source. True statements remain valid. True statements remain valid. Even if hurled in anger. Even if now whisper, my mind is open to the truth, whatever its source. True statements remain valid, even if hurled in anger. My mind is open to the truth, whatever its source. True statements remain valid, even if hurled in anger. Now silently, mentally, gazing at the spiritual life. My mind is open to the truth. Whatever its source, true statements remain valid, even if hurled in anger. And once more, taking it deeper, the awareness at the superconscious level, at the point between the brass. My mind is open to the truth whatever its source. True statements remain valid, even if hurled in anger. And now silently pray, Divine Mother, let me hear thy melodies everywhere, in the laughing brooks, in the songs of nightingales, yes, even in the roar of city traffic. Behind all earthly sounds, let me listen for thy voice alone.
watching us virtually. Uh, my name is Paul again, and this is Michael, and we are very, very great, glad and grateful and happy to be here. Now, I'm going to read from Rays of the One Light, in case anybody's not familiar with it, by Swami Kriyananda, and it is weekly commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita. And this week's reading is, Faith is a call to prayer. Prayer is a call to faith. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramhansa Yogananda. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7 and 21, we read, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Verily, I say unto you, if you have faith, and doubt not, if ye shall unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Paramhansa Yogananda showed by his own example that prayer is a power provided we believe deeply in that power. When our thoughts and feelings are strongly focused and then united in growing awareness of the divine presence within, they can bring even seemingly unrealistic wishes to fulfillment. When Paramhansa Yogananda was in charge of his school in Ranchi, India, he took the boys on occasional outings to the surrounding countryside. There was a waterfall not far away, he told Swami Kriyananda. When I took them sometimes, it was dangerous to cross there. But I would cry out to the boys, do you believe in God? Yes, they would shout back enthusiastically. And so we always crossed in safety. Years later, after I had gone to America, one of the teachers tried to do the same thing, but he lacked the spiritual power. One of the boys slipped on a rock and was drowned. Thus the master explained, belief alone is not enough. It must be united to one-pointed awareness, which leads to self-realization. The Bhagavad Gita in the sixth chapter underscores the necessity for such one-pointed concentration. Whenever the mind, fickle and restless, wanders off from its concentration, let the meditating yogi withdraw it resolutely, spurning every distraction, no matter how alluring, and bring it back again and again under the control of the self. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Aum. 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 Good morning. It is such a joy to be here, an honor and a privilege to be standing here. Let's start with reading from Whispers from Eternity by Paramahansa Yogananda. These are prayer demands. He called them demands. They are not, they're not begging, they are demanding. As <laughs> In fact, I'll go back to it, to it, but he has actually a section where he says he's to demands, and in brackets he added, please read carefully. <laughs> so these are whispers one and two, the very first one, cosmic salutation. This is inspired by the 
Bhagavad Gita, the Hindu Bible as Yogananda called it. O Spirit, I bow to thee in front of me, behind me, on the left and on the right. I bow to thee above and beneath. I bow to thee all around me. I bow to thee within and without. I bow to thee everywhere, for thou art everywhere. And then we demand of thee as thy children. Thou art our Father, we are made in thine image. We are thy children, we neither ask nor pray as beggars, but demand of thee as thy children the gifts of wisdom, salvation, health, happiness, and eternal joy. Whether naughty or good, we are still thy children, all of us. Help us to perceive and understand inwardly thy will for us. Teach us the independent use of our human will, since thou hast given it to us to use freely, attuned to thy wisdom guided will. This is the whole service put in two paragraphs. Faith is a call to prayer. Prayer is a call to faith. Have you noticed how we've been talking about prayer for the last three weeks? First, a couple of weeks ago, Paul led us in the best way to pray. And last week, Ramurti talked to us about why offer God anything when he knows, why, when he has everything. Why tell God anything when he knows everything? And today we're talking about faith is a prayer to uh, a call to prayer and prayer is a call to faith because this is the very essence of our practice our journey towards self-realization I was really curious as to what the dictionary says about prayer and faith so I of course I looked it up and the short definition I got from uh, Webster dictionary on prayer is it's an earnest request or wish, not far off, earnest request or wish. But Yogananda defined it as, true prayer is an expression of the soul, an urge from the soul. It is a hunger for God that arises from within, expressing itself to him ardently, silently. Vocalized prayers are wonderful only if the attention is on God. And if the words are a call to God, out of the abundance of the soul's desire for him. He's talking about devotion. Never think that God does not answer your prayers. Every word you have whispered to him, he has written in his heart, and someday he will answer you. So what is faith and what is belief? Belief is something of the mind. It's sort of a, a hypothesis. I believe the distance between the sun and the earth is 93 million miles, but I don't know for sure. I've never measured it. I don't think anyone has. But is it cold here right now? Absolutely. We know that. We feel it, right? That is faith because we, it is, there's no, no one is going to convince you otherwise. You feel it. It's an experience. That is faith. And, that, and belief is just some theory. And I like the sentence that Yogananda, uh, he added at, at the end, every word you have whispered to him, he has written in his heart, and someday he will answer you. I couldn't help but uh, remember that joke that's been told quite a few times, especially during this service, about uh, a minister who's been uh, a minister of a large church with thousands of followers. He died and went to the uh, gates of heaven. and. There was no one there. The doors were closed. No angels. It was just deserted. So he waited. Waited and waited and no one came. The doors were still closed. So he was getting a little anxious and a little bit, the ego got a little, you know, offended. And then comes another person dies and this man who was really shabby looking, long hair, and not very well dressed. And as soon as he arrived, the door just flung open and all the saints, all the angels came out. St. Peter came out and said, oh, Joe, how are you? So the minister got really, really upset and he said, who is this man? Who is this Joe? And I've been a minister so, for so many years. 
And another angel told him, oh, this is Joe. He is a cab driver from New York City. A cab driver from New York City. I've been a minister all my life, and I've helped so many people pray. And oh, no, no, the angel said. There were a lot more people who prayed really fervently and very often in the back of Joe's, <laughs> Joe's taxi. <laughs> <laughs> it really matters how we pray. Just as, as the Bible says, keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep seeking and you will find. Keep knocking and the doors will be opened unto you. But there have been so many prayers in the past, I'm sure, that were never answered. I'm sure every single one of us have had a prayer that was never answered. But the trick is, the key is to have the mind so focused, concentrated, with powerful one-pointed focus and the growing awareness of God within, the, awarding, the uh, uh, growing awareness of his presence within our heart and, uh, and mind. And when we're able to focus and direct that thought and prayer and demand at the point between the eyebrows and broadcast it, then he cannot ignore us. Then he will answer our prayers. A friend of mine, um, a long time ago, when her son was 11 years old, she took him and his friend swimming one day. And this is a, a large Olympic-sized swimming pool. And she's, not, she's a swimmer, but she doesn't swim that much. And she was just sitting on the side reading her book. And the two kids were talking. All of a sudden, her son comes over to her and he goes, Mom, can you jump off the 10 meter, that's like 33 feet high, diving board, the, the platform? Uh, has anybody been up there? Has anybody dived from there? I have been up there and looked down. That Olympic-sized pool looks so tiny. You feel like it's, so, it's only 33 feet high, but it feels so far. I did the right thing. I climbed down the stairs. I did not jump. <laughs> so she told me, so when he asked her, she just went up, looked down and jumped. And I said, so when she told me the story, really, you jumped? And I know she has a fear of heights. And she said, the way my son asked me, there was no way I was going to say no to him. What happened was they were talking, the two kids were talking, and he, they were really admiring how people can die from there. So he just said, oh, my mom can do it. She's his, <laughs> his superhero. And sure enough, she couldn't say no, she jumped. Why? Because he asked her, knowing that she was able to do it, knowing that she was never going to say no to him. And she felt that sweetness, that conviction. And she, I, I will never forget, she said, there was no way I could not say no to him the way he asked me. And that's exactly how we have to pray. So there are some things that Yogananda taught us and Swami Kriyananda summarized for us that we have to remember when we pray. We have to pray with full attention and full focus. That's overcoming restlessness. We don't, we don't really focus on the restlessness, but we focus on the gathering our thoughts and energy together. Our energy, our thoughts are all over. When was the last time we really prayed fervently? And have you noticed how your mind was at least doing at least one or two other things, oh, I have to do this, I have to call so-and-so back, I forgot that email. I've... How can anyone listen to you when you're trying to convince them of something and where, when you have a million other things and you're answering the phone and you're answering somebody else and trying to convince them? Divine Mother, how can she listen to us when our mind is scattered everywhere? We have to be able to control our feelings, our thoughts, our energies together before we can offer her that energy, before we can offer that devotion back to her, that love to her. Something that we don't have the control of, how can we give it? If I don't have any control of the wind, how can I capture and give it to anybody? It's exactly that way. We have to be able to control our minds, our scattered brain, before we can offer it to Divine Mother. There is the story of, I'm sure all of us have heard this, the story of Arjuna and his teacher, Dronacharya, in the Mahabharata. Dronacharya was their teacher, and he was teaching all the kids um, archery. 
and there was a contest. So there was a wooden bird on a uh, tree limb, and so the uh, all of them came one by one, and the first one he aimed, and he asked him, what do you see? He said, I see the clouds behind the tree, I see the tree, and I see the wooden bird. Okay, he shot and he missed. Second one, what do you see? Oh, I see the sun, I see the tree, I see they described everything they saw and the bird. Second one missed, so a lot of them missed. Then came Arjuna. So he aimed and Dronacharya asked him, what do you see? He said, I see the head of the bird. What else do you see? I see the head of the bird. What else? I don't see anything. And sure enough, he got it. Our mind has to be focused on that one thing that we're looking for in order to be able for it to be effective. Um, when we were little, I used to love doing it over and over with a magnifying lens. Get a piece of paper, go outside in the sun, and just focus it right at the right point, and the, the, the paper starts to burn. For some reason, that used to fascinate me, and it's like I never got enough of it. I'll try it like every day. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly how powerful our mind can be when it's focused. And determination. We have to have determination because our, our prayers are not going to be answered necessarily tomorrow. If I want something today, maybe I may, I may not get it today because Divine Mother has her own timeline. She knows exactly what we need and when we need it. Yogananda said, a saint is a sinner that never gave up. So we should not give up. A fascinating story I recently, it was an interview that I watched. A man named Jose Hernandez, some of you are probably familiar with him. He was born in the Stockton area here in California. But his parents were migrant farm workers. So they would go back to Mexico and then come back here. So six months of the year they were here, six months of the year they were back in uh, Mexico. And he helped his parents pick fruits and vegetables all over the um, central uh, California region. And that's how he grew up. He didn't have the best of education. When he was 10 years old, he was watching TV and he saw the Apollo 17 landing. He was so fascinated, he dropped what he was doing. He went to his father and he said, I'm going to be an astronaut. Is that what you want to be? Yes. So his father gave him what he said, a five ingredient recipe for success. His father, who was not educated, he's a farm worker, he told him, number one, define your goal. Two, identify how far you are from your goal. Three, draw, draw your roadmap. Four, educate yourself. And five, put out the effort. He said, give them always more than they asked for. Give them always more than they asked for. And then he said, I added a sixth ingredient myself, and that was perseverance. This kid went to college and when got his master's degree. He applied to NASA. They rejected him. He applied again. They rejected him. Applied again. They rejected him. You know how many times he applied? 11 times. <laughs> Each time, he will see why he was rejected. So, oh, I need a pilot's license because he saw the other uh, candidates had pilot's, a pilot's license, so he would get a pilot's, li a pilot's license, he would train himself and get a, a, a license. And then he noticed that a lot of the candidates had a deep sea diving license. So he taught himself how to do that and got a license. And then he realized the International Space Station is run by America and Russia. So he taught himself Russian. On the 12th time, they accepted him. And he actually joined the uh, space mission in 2009 on the discovery. He is a, a an amazing soul, and he lives right here in California, in Los Angeles. In fact, Netflix is actually doing a documentary on him that's going to be coming out maybe in a couple of years, he said. He never gave up. He never let discouragement get in the way. Discouragement is another thing we have to fight. How does discouragement get to us? It's very insidious. It's doubt. Doubt. Doubt is an energy that actually pulls on er our energy down. And it, we don't see it coming oftentimes. It can come from other people around us that will 
put a little doubt in, a little seed of doubt in, in our mind. Or it can come from within, and that's the worst kind, because we don't see it coming. But how do we fight it? Yogananda said, I'm sorry, Swami Kriyananda said, the only cure for doubt is love. The only cure for doubt is love. What love is he talking about? That's devotion for what it is that we want. Jose Hernandez wanted to be an astronaut so bad that, that that's all he wanted, that's all he was devoted to, and he got it. If we want Divine Mother that much, if our devotion is to Divine Mother that much, we will get there. There's no doubt that's going to be, there's, there's no doubt that's going to be, that's going to discourage, discourage us from getting there. Devotion to God, that's the love of God. We, want, we, want to, we, want, we have to want it so badly that we will do anything to get there. That's the devotion we're talking about. In fact, Swami, uh, Swami Sri Yukteswar said, without first developing the natural love of the heart, you cannot take a single step on the spiritual path. So how do we develop devotion? Well, that's a, a tricky one, but Yogananda has given us some, uh, some techniques. That comprom comprises 25% of what's needed to get there, to have devotion. And we have to put out the effort, chanting and doing the right thing and living rightly and all those things. But we also have to ask God and Guru, show me the way. Show me the way, because without the Guru's effort, that counts for another 25%, and God's grace, which counts for another 50%, we're not going to get there. We have to put out a full 100% of the 25% that's required of us, and they will meet us 75% of the way, Guru and God. Another thing we have to do when we pray is we have to have the purity of the heart. What we ask for has to be something expansive. Then God will meet us halfway. It has to be for the highest good for us and for whoever we're praying for. Sometimes you may pray for somebody to get better, somebody that's sick to get better, and it may not come true. You think that's a prayer that's worthwhile, that's a good prayer, but it may not, it may not come true because Divine Mother has other plans. We don't know this person's karma. There's this uh, example I heard about a lady that was praying for her father. She, didn't want to pray for her father, but people convinced her to pray for him because he was sick. And he, in fact, did get better. But afterwards, he just left the spiritual path and led a life, a really, really bad life after that. So not praying for him, she felt it. She, intuitively, she knew she, did not, she should not pray for him. But with the convincing of other people, with the encouragement, well, I wouldn't call that encouragement, but she was convinced enough to pray for him, and sure enough, it wasn't the right thing. So we have to have the purity of the heart to know what to pray for and how to pray. And our prayer should not be mitigated by our egoic desires. It has to be for what we need, not for what we want. And very important, we have to have the attunement when we pray. Just like this was a good example, the lady that didn't want to pray for her uh, father because she, was, she already knew what was the right thing to do. In the Lord's Prayer, there is a part where that I did not really understand for a long time, and I've been repeating the Lord's Prayer since I was five years old. I went to Catholic school. Um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is, heaven, as it is in heaven. That is attunement. We're saying, we're praying, let my will be your will. That's attunement. Our job is to tune as much as we can to the will of Divine Mother. The prayer that we said earlier, I will will, I will reason, and I will act, but guide thou my will, reason, and activity to the right path in everything. Yogananda called that one of the two most important prayers. The other one being, give me thyself that, may, that I may share thee with all. But this one he said was just as important. I will will, I will reason, and I will act but guide thou my reason, reason, will, and activity to the right path in everything. And then we have to pray with that childlike trust and conviction that whatever we ask of Divine Mother is going to come true. Just like that 11-year-old who asked his mother to jump off that platform, and she did. She couldn't say no. 
Divine Mother is not going to say no to us when we ask in, in, in such a manner. She already knows what we need. In fact, in the keys to demands that I mentioned earlier, where Yogananda said, read carefully, he says, our prayers should be protected from the storms of doubt, distraction, mental idleness, absent-mindedness, procrastination, the thought of leaving meditation until tomorrow, that is, thinking of something else while imagining <coughs> the mind is wholly on the soul of a prayer. Such parasites, he called them, need to be destroyed by the germicides of self-control, determination, and loyalty to a teaching. And then, I put this at the end, we have to pray with openness and receptivity. We have to be open enough to ask humbly, Divine Mother, show me the way. We have to ask her to help us. And that's the prayer you're going to mention. I will, will I reason in our act, but guide thou my reason, will and activity to the right path in everything. But show me the way. And then have the open heart to receive. Just like a blocked garden hose cannot pass water, we have to be able to let the conduit flow, the, the energy flow. We have to be able to accept. Uh, I'm sorry, Ramurti uh, told us the story last week the man that wanted a Volkswagen all his life and he prayed and prayed and prayed and he never got it. When he went to heaven, when he died and went to heaven, he asked God, and why didn't you give my Volkswagen? He said, well, I, I had this beautiful Rolls Royce or Cadillac waiting for you, but that Volkswagen was just in the way. <laughs> he couldn't get past it. We have to have that open heart to receive. The affirmation we said, I believe it was last year, I accept with calm impartiality whatever comes my way. That's the attitude we have to have. Because the answers come, can come in so many different ways. They can come from the wrong person. They can come from well, someone we think is an enemy. Just like the affirmation we said, whatever the truth, I accept if it's true, even if hurled in anger. We have to be op able to open to, and have an open heart to accept it. And a lot of times, our prayers will be answered not in words, not in actions, but simply in silent, intuitive perception. We just have to have that calmness and openness to feel and understand it. So if we ask Divine Mother, who is really, when you think about it, we call her Divine Mother because she's closer to us than our own mother, than our own family, than our closest friends. If we ask with deep attunement to her divine will, with concentration and attention, and with that childlike trust and sweetness, how can she say no? She can't. She will not. So think about what we just talked about. Mental focus, meditation, calmness, patience, determination, open, openness of the heart, receptivity, love, devotion. We, all, we need all these things for prayer, right? But all these are all the things that we actually practice on the spiritual path. This is our journey. That's why prayer is our whole spiritual path. Because these are the things that we practice on this path, right? And it's the way we connect with God, with the source that we came from. And that it's, the pra it's prayer that takes us back to the infinite. And faith gives us the conviction that our prayers will be answered. Faith gives us the conviction that if we practice it this way, if we pray this way, then we will get there. That's why Yogananda taught and Swami Kriyananda put it in very simple but really deep statements. Faith is a call to prayer and prayer is a call to faith. God bless you all. Yeah,